That's why these people understand who exactly they're doing this to. They know we're God's people. They're not telling us, but they know who we are, but they're doing it to us anyway. And they're not showing us no mercy. They won't even let us know that we're the people. Right? Read. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians, that ye might remove them far from their border. Remove them far from their border. Read. Verse 7. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them, and will return your recompense upon your own head. And I will, set, and I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah. And they shall sell them to the Sabians. So that's what's e what eventually going to happen right there. Those nations, those nations will be sold. Those nations that sold us will be sold. Galatians 6 and 7 says you reap what you sow. That's the truth. So they're there for a serious destruction. Hold that and get Ezekiel. And let's get that battle. Stick with us here. You're still holding Joel, right? Mm -hmm. Finish reading Joel. Joel, uh, chapter 3, verse 8. Go ahead. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah. Go ahead. And they shall sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off, for the Most High have spoken it. So you want to sell us to a people far off? The Lord is going to have it where we're going to set up some people someplace and say, listen, how much you want for them? And they're going to be sold afar off. It's going to be a seven-year period in which all this will be happening. Then after the seven-year period, then the kingdom of heaven. But there will be a seven-year roundup first, a cleansing of this earth. I need you to go to Ezekiel, Ezekiel 38, dealing with the battle of Armageddon. Read that. Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 1. And the word of the Most High came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach, and Tabal, and, the pro and prophesy against him. Now most people in the churches today teach that this is talking about Russia. In a way they are correct, but in a way they're incorrect. Because the original Russians were not Caucasian. The original Russians were Asian. Okay? So when it talks about Gog and Magog and Tabal, it's talking about the Asians who were originally the inhabitants of Russia. These people were pushed into China. So this is talking about the Chinese people, the Japanese people, the, the Asians. This is what this is speaking of here. Read. So verse, he says, prophesy against him. Read. Verse 3. And say, thus saith the Most High Power, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tabal, and I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy, thy jaws, and will bring thee forth. And all thy arm, army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all, all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. And all of them handling swords. So this is armies. So when you look in the Middle East, who are the only people who are not in the Middle East right now that are a part of the UN power? China, China and who else? Russia. Who, are, who, who were the two that shunned NATO when they wanted to go against Libya? Exactly. So they're standing on the sideline. But the Most High says, listen, I'm going to put hook in your jaws and turn you back. Don't think you're going to escape your armies being in that Middle East. I'm going to cause something that will make you bring your armies down there too. What is it? when they go against Iran. Iran is Japheth. The Persians are not Middle Eastern. They are actually Japheth. They're in the tents of Shem. So what's going to happen? The Chinese are going to come and help their brother. Why? Because the majority of their energy in oil and petrol comes from Iran. <clears throat> so if America in the Western world tried to stop Iran's try to go against Iran, that's going to slow up their oil supply and their petrol supply in China. So this is going to force them to come into the war. Now the Mosai got them all down there together. <laughs> now you see, 
You think that all these things are compartmentalized as, as if we are living on a separate planet. All these things are connected. The Most High made a pretext for them to be in the Middle East to war against them for what they did to us. Now this gives me a, a, a broader spectrum or, or a greater understanding on what's happening within the earth. In the end time, how did the Most High free Israel? He freed Israel coming out of Egypt by breaking the army of Pharaoh. So he had all their armies down there together to break the last army that have power over his people. Same exact thing. Now don't you think they need to be teaching this in church? It, it brings rational understanding of what's happening in the earth. Because they don't teach this, people in the church are not interested in foreign policy and what's happening over in the Middle East. Because they don't think that has anything to do with them. They just have to love Jesus. Okay? Finish reading. Verse 5. Persia. Ethiopia. Persia is who? Persia. Persia. I rank. Who? Persia. Ethiopia. And Libya. And who? And Libya. And who? And Libya. So they're in these scriptures. So you think these so-called revolutionary things that are stirring up, it's just by chance. The scriptures give us full understanding of what's happening within the earth today. That's why we're not panicking. People talk about, oh my God, what's going on over Egypt? Oh my baby, oh listen. <laughs> Let's make this clear. And I'm going to say this. I'm talking about God's people. God's people have a better chance in the Middle East than they do in the Western world. Believe me. When they, let me tell you, when they break these people and bring forth these armies against our people in this Western world, it's going to be little to no escape. They've been watching us, surveilling us, checking us out for the longest. They know our patterns. They know exactly where we're frequent. It's going to be nothing for them to wipe us out and get us rounded up at, at, at a drop of a dime. The one place they can't really get their bead on and put their grip on is Africa and the Middle East. Because there's just too many people. It's too many people. And you have those some countries over there with nuclear capability. I'm about to go into that in a moment. So you're just not going to knock a country with nuclear capability off the, off the grid. Yes? Okay, um, why do you think like China is trying to colonize Africa again? Well, China is really not trying to colonize Africa. What China is trying to do is get resources, understanding the resources are about to dry up, and Africa is the most fertile land with unreaped resources within the earth. The, the rest of the earth been reaped. But China trying to get a stake in it first before, the, before Europe does. So, and that's going to be the last pain on our people in Africa because they're not looking to share Africa with the people that are there. They're looking to do to them what they did to the other people around the earth. What they did to us all over the earth. So they're looking to destroy and kill those people in Africa. Okay? But... Yes, that's why they have these Ivory Coast things kicking off in those certain areas now. These are all coups because they have mineral resources. Everything is drying up. You got the water's poisoned, you got the food that's poisoned, and the only rich, fertile land that can actually help us survive at the very end is in Africa. And they know this. So they had to get Libya out of the way, which is Gaddafi, because Gaddafi was trying to build an African alliance and get the tyrants out knowing that that will be the last ground at the very end. So China don't care about Africa. They want to reap those gardens for themselves so that they can feed the Chinese. But the most I got something for them too. Japan didn't escape. You understand? China is not going to escape what's about to happen to them. But I'm going to tell you who's going to get it worse than all countries. America. America will get their America's punishment is the punishment we read of in Revelation 18. It tell you the smoke going to come up from her and the most high is going to smell it as a sweet savor. It's like us smelling of a nice T-bone steak fried well done. And it's like, oh my, it smells so good. 
The Most High is going to breathe it in. It's going to be a sigh of relief when the smoke is coming off of us from the Most High. Okay? And uh, when you read the judgment of these other countries, and we can read it, it lets you know a third of Asia is going to be saved. None of Europe. Europe is going to be underwater, but that's when Christ returns. But America is going to be broken down slowly. And then he's going to hit them with the bombs in every direction. And nothing is going to tell you, it tell you in the scriptures, every missile that's aimed towards America will hit. The Most High will aim them. He will make sure everyone hit. So when they go against Iran, who's, who's, who, who's Iran in league with? Venezuela? You got China? You got Russia? You got Cuba? Oh, don't forget, Cuba is right next to America. And it's like America got nukes right here and Cuba got nukes right here. So when this happens, it's not just Iran. It's all the countries in league with Iran. That's going to knock out the central base. North Korea as well. North Korea as well. So it's too many nukes to hit that, to, to knock that. 